uh, welcome to this uh, special panel discussion uh, that we have today. Uh, we have uh, an eclectic mix of speakers. Uh, the topic for today is making search work for your brand from awareness to conversion. Just to put a little context uh, before we proceed, uh, as we know, with the spike in digital consumption, search has become a critical channel for advertisers as millions of customers, customer decisions uh, are made, you know, the, the journey begins with this concept called search. There is consensus among brand experts that search advertising can help capture premium yet unexplored customer geographies and profiles. However, to do so, there is a rule book uh, at play, at work, and to decode that rule book, we will have our experts joining us. Before I introduce them, I want to thank uh, our partners, Microsoft, and in Mobi for partnering, intuiting this engaging webinar. As we know, Microsoft advertising provides intelligent solutions that empowers to deliver engaging, personalized experiences that value people. And in Mobi drives real connections between brands and consumers by leveraging its technology platforms. Before we go further, I want to introduce our first speaker, Mr. Amit Tiwari, VP Marketing Havels. Uh, Mr. Tiwari brings a solid experience of almost two decades in the field of marketing. He is currently entrusted with the responsibility to establish a strong brand identity and presence in the market via strategic end-to-end -end marketing solutions. Welcome, Mr. Tiwari. We also have Ms. Rubina Singh, CEO I Prospect. Uh, she has uh, over almost two decades of experience and has an anywhere and where and wearable track record across digital print and broadcasting under her leadership i prospect india has grown rapidly and now serves 100 plus clients and empowers over 200 plus people welcome miss singh uh, we also have miss bhavna mittal uh, who is vp head media and digital rpsc group rpsg group she started her professional journey with Saatchi and Saatchi, launching Hyundai, Santru, and Accent in India. From advertising, she moved over to media auditing, helping Accenture set up and establish the offering in India in 2007 before foraying into the brand side. Uh, welcome, Ms. Mittal. We also have Mr. Devesh uh, Sahni, Head of Performance Marketing, Tata Click. Uh, he is a graduate from IIM Bangalore with over 10 years of experience in strategy, turnkey projects, and setting up a digital marketing team. Uh, welcome, Mr. Sahni. We are also joined by Mr. Jahid Ahmed, uh, VP and Head Digital Marketing, HGFC Bank. Uh, Ahmed is an astute uh, digital marketing profession, uh, professional with over 14 years of experience in VFSI sector. He has been instrumental in institutionalizing data-driven digital campaigns, MarTech, and transformation uh, set up across various BFSI organizations. And uh, the session chair for today is Mr. Rohit Doshi, uh, Director, Microsoft Advertising in Mobi. Uh, Mr. Dosi is the director of uh, Microsoft Advertising Business at Inmobi. He is responsible for PNL management, revenue growth, strategic partnerships for Microsoft advertising businesses across India. Welcome all of you. Uh, we will have a question answer round, which Mr. Doshi will, uh, you know, he will be uh, guiding you on that and posing those questions towards the end. And over to you, Mr. Doshi. Uh, all the best. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the, uh, for the introduction and, and a very warm welcome to all the panelists for today's webinar. Uh, the topic of today, today's webinar is um, how to make search work for your brand. Uh, but I think before we get into the panel discussion, I just wanted to take this opportunity to uh, talk a bit about the user behavior and insights of premium audience in India that we have specifically seen on Microsoft Search in the past few months. Uh, Talking about the SEM market in India, the digital media spends, I think if, if you look at the uh, share of spends, they are skewed across various formats, right? Uh, I think that includes search, social display, video, and a few others as well. But search specifically continues to dominate a major share of um, digital advertising spends in general. Uh, just if I kind of, you know, look at the year over year growth at an overall level, search ad spends have seen 17 to 20% um, growth at an overall level. 
um, although spending on different formats um, it varies for different verticals but i think search sees a fair share of advertising budget for most of the verticals uh, verticals such as uh, e-commerce bfsi and consumer durables uh, they still spend the highest share of their marketing budget on search itself and i think with lockdown and and slowdown in overall marketing spends this year due to the pandemic a lot of formats have gotten affected in terms of overall spends from brands but search uh, is is one of those formats that continue to be an area of investment for brands uh, in 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 different verticals till now uh getting into some insights uh of what's trending among indian premium users that we've seen on microsoft search itself uh there are some key trends which we have seen for premium audiences on microsoft search i think in terms of uh what users have been searching specifically uh, there are certainly a few categories which saw quite a boost in uh, the number of users uh, looking out for specific products brands services etc in some specific categories and i would uh, kind of you know want to talk a bit about the key trends uh, you know in in the changing behavior of indians in in these categories few of these categories are hyper local services online learning and education e-commerce remote working etc which have seen a huge uplift even i think uh, with some of the niche categories like health and wellness uh, home and garden right these these categories have also seen a huge spike in the user queries i think users are now searching now more than ever right and 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 there are a large number of users looking out for brands and products in these categories uh moving on uh just deep diving a bit into each of these categories uh for hyper local and e-commerce right there has been a huge uh, spike in the number of users looking out for hyper local services uh search queries with the presence of specifically near me right uh, in them uh, as the users are looking for several things around them i'm sure uh, each one of you have kind of you know also searched about uh, things with you know uh, queries uh, or phrases like near me uh, when you search online right and i think with the lockdown first and the pandemic continuing users are searching for grocery shops vet hospitals uh, doctors stationery shops hardware shops etc right around them and and just in terms of you know delivery related queries if we see right we have seen almost these queries spike up by more than 200% in the last few months uh home delivery of medicines right uh, uh like food delivery home delivery of medicines have seen more than 500% uh, increase in just user queries post lockdown uh, with everyone staying at home and i and i think with the comfort uh, with everyone kind of you know staying within their comfort right this trend is expected to continue in the months to come e-commerce as a category has witnessed a huge growth in in users searching overall for uh, apparels electronics appliances uh, the likes of online grocery buying right with the with the pres- uh, with the presence of players like big basket swiggy dunzo have seen a massive surge uh larger e-commerce players are also seeing like a positive trend in terms of just online user shopping behavior in general uh e-learning right uh, e-learning is kind of totally hit it off right uh, online learning has seen a huge rise in user searches and i think as a category uh, i think with learning and education centers which is schools colleges etc being closed a huge number of audiences is getting used to the e-learning methods and i think this continues to be one of the most sought out categories by the users uh and and when i say online learning it is not only people enrolling for online courses right but users also looking to learn new things uh, it could be you know uh, how to do stuff right how to bake how to cook uh, finding new recipes etc right so i think these type of queries have seen a huge jump online courses type of queries have witnessed more than 500% increase i think with everyone looking to learn online and enroll for online courses as they stay home and they look to upskill and pick up more things when they stay at home uh talking about uh, categories uh, specifically like uh, you know home improvement i think a lot more people are now willing to invest uh, in their homes right as as the amount of time that everyone is investing or 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 is present at their home has significantly gone up uh, and and a lot of folks are now picking up new hobbies and interest levels as well like gardening fitness uh, healthy eating habits etc right so they are also exploring all of that on 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 search that is uh, that those are some of the trends that we have been seeing at least in this category uh, we have seen a huge increase in user queries user queries such as appliances like dishwasher uh, refrigerators etc this is primarily again because of absence of i think household help during lo- lockdown uh, particularly this is more true for indian ecosystem but i think people are looking for you know kind of appliances like dishwasher and refrigerators uh, people are optimizing for space at home 
uh, and I think space saving furniture is another category which has actually seen a huge growth, right, in search volume with people searching for things like Murphy beds, sofa beds, etc. So this is another category and an interesting one which has start to, started to come up in the past few months. Uh, moving on, I think uh, with most of the offices closed now, uh, remote working has kind of become the new normal, right? And, and all of us have adjusted to working from home. As a result of this, categories like work from home equipment, which is, you know, people are looking out there for laptops, printers, scanners, uh, and other accessories, right? Even video conferencing softwares, VPN related queries have seen a huge uplift uh, in this category. Uh, remotely associated categories with, uh, you know, working from home even, right? Like work from home office furniture, study tables, chairs, laptop tables, etc. have seen a huge rise. And I think with, with you know, a uh, prolonged remote working situation, uh, users have been researching a lot more and more about investing in setting up workstations or workplaces at their homes itself. Moving on, um, health and finance again, uh, you know, uh, have been critical now more than ever. Uh, online doctor consultation and immunity related queries have seen a mega spike in the last quarter. People have started to now uh, invest a lot more in financial safety. Uh, they've started to invest a lot more in health during this pandemic. And if they're, they've also started to uh, prepare for similar future events. Uh, so I think health and finances is another category where we have seen a huge uplift. Uh, a lot more users are now looking to invest online and they have been searching for investment options online. So queries such as mutual funds, health insurances and other investment plans have also seen a huge uplift. Uh, I think online transactions in general have went up, right? Uh, with a lot more people shopping online, uh, the payments are also happening online. So I think uh, payments is another category which has, which has kind of, you know, uh, seen a huge uplift. And, and I think with the adoption of online payments, I think it is only going to continue to see uh, that trend in the quarters to come. So, so what does this uh, actually mean for brands, right, across verticals? Uh, I think users are searching now more than ever. And users are spending a lot more time online. I think brands are also being a lot more innovative and brands for different verticals are finding new and innovative ways of interacting with their users. Uh, brands are definitely looking to leverage this increased online activity, increased search activity, right? Uh, and a lot of them are just not using search for performance, right? But they're also using search advertising for driving awareness and consideration. And, and I think search is uh, continuing to be a very effective medium to drive consideration and awareness as well. So I think um, with that thought in mind, uh, I think there is a huge opportunity for brands to capture their users online. Uh, the interesting part would, would be as to how can brands rise to the challenge, right? And, and with that thought in mind, I would like to open this panel uh, discussion on the topic, how to make search work for your brand. Okay, so, um, so once again, uh, a very warm welcome to all of you to this webinar. Uh, first of all, I think I'm super excited to be hosting this panel discussion and I'm looking forward to the we webinar. Uh, I think the past few months have been very challenging and I would say, unique for everyone, right? I'm, I'm sure each one of us has, has gone through probably something like this for the first time ever. And, and with everyone being stuck in homes itself, a lot of us have also picked up new hobbies, right? Uh, activities, we've got, got to spend like a lot more time with our families. Uh, in terms of behavior and traits as well, a lot has changed in the past few months uh, in terms of things that we have been looking out for around us, even what we have been searching, uh, searching online, right? So with that thought in mind, let me start by asking everyone this. What have you been searching for online lately? And, and uh, yeah, yeah, so that's, uh, I, I kind of, you know, wanted to open up this session with a question to understand, you know, what have you been searching for online? So, uh, Rubina, you want to go first? Sure. Thanks for having me here. Uh, first of all, I'm really pleased to be part of the panel. Uh, you know, at the cost of sounding a bit like a spoiled brat, but the fact is that I've never cooked in my life. So thanks to the lockdown, I've had to learn how to cook. And I have pleasantly surprised myself, I would say. And my family also believes that, that I've turned out to be a decent cook. So obviously for me, the journey began uh, by searching easy recipes. To now, uh, it has graduated to being a bit more experimental, trying new things. And I've been looking up so I've been looking up everything on the cooking space, you know, um, right on YouTube, uh, checking on assistants when I'm cooking to give me the ingredients or even looking at Instagram for inspiration on, uh, and follow hashtags to see what I can cook for my family for dinner and uh, what's the new meal I can do. So that's been on my mind. <laughs> Rahit, you want to go next? 
Hi. So, yeah, Rit, thanks. And um, yeah, see, I think I am literally searching and literally something that's intriguing me to the core. That is Rasoi Me Kaun Tha. That's, that's what I've been searching for. And then when, and I'm hoping I'll get the answer soon. And the other one I'm really searching for is how to get away with murder. Okay, no pun intended. Okay. And that's I'm talking about the Netflix series. Don't take me out of this. Sure. Thanks, uh, uh, Rohit. I think uh, I've been actually searching uh, how to keep my kids quite engaging online. I think that's a, that's the biggest task to look for uh, because every two hours they have something or the other as a query saying this is this is done what next for me, and that that becomes a bigger challenge uh, for us. And if I see from the entire spectrum, uh, it is it's a, it's a big challenge because if they're actually trying to invest around six hours their energy in school, then how do you can actually devote uh, their entire period of time on online? And that, that, that's the biggest search that I've One thing which I've actually been curiously doing it uh, very religiously is to find out the date when we can actually have a vaccine for Corona. That is the two things that I've been searching for quite some time. Yeah, I think that is something that we all have been searching for. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, uh, still awaiting uh, good news on that. Bhavna, you, you want to share what you have been searching for online lately? Oh, thanks, Rohit. Uh, I guess for me, search is something which is just a thought away. So, you know, when you pose that question, I was actually thinking of what I've been searching. So it's been started from maybe the banana bread series, which everybody was trying to do and which I never got to cooking. So Rubina, you're not the only one I can assure you. And I still haven't learned cooking. So uh, to maybe, you know, uh, something on YouTube on some DIYs and how to try out some natural things for your hair or your face or how to fix something at home. So it's literally actually, you know, just uh, it's been across platforms. It's on Google Maps. You want to just check how the driving distance to maybe Delhi has decreased from Gurgaon. So it's like, actually, you know, you realize that you pick your phone up so many times, you end up searching for something or the other every time you're actually on the device. Yeah, I think uh, the driving distance one has happened uh, with me a lot. I think with Bangalore, uh, I mean, there is no more traffic on the roads, right? So I, I'm kind of sometimes surprised uh, that, you know, is, is the time being shown to my office or any of the place that you usually visit, is, is it the right one or not? So I think sometimes it keeps me amazed and wonder as to, you know, what how things can change so so drastically. Uh, Devesh, you want to you wanna share what you have been searching for online? Oh yeah, so I have a one and a half year old. Uh, she gets bored with everything as, as Amit said, right? Uh, so I've been searching various books, toys that can engage her. Uh, and she has an interest span of exactly three minutes. So for you, it's two hours, for me, it's three minutes. So I think it's challenging there. Second thing I've been searching a lot is how to ease my burden on Bhattan, Jharu and Pocha. So I'm finding all equipments that make your life easier on that because now that responsibility has come on us. So those are two things that I'm searching. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. But Rohit, just so that Rubina and Bhavna doesn't doesn't feel left out over there, I have been searching for Dalgona coffee, and I can like kind of make it with a plomb nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Keep on that, Jahid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. So uh, I think thank you for everyone, everyone for sharing. You know what you have been searching for online, uh, uh, online lately. I think I couldn't uh, relate. Uh, I could not relate more to kind of you know what everyone has been searching because I think some of these uh, things I've been searching for myself. Right. So thanks for sharing. Uh, I think that that brings me to my next question. Uh, what have uh, what has been the search behavior? If I I were to kind of you know talk about search behavior specifically in your verticals or spaces, right? And more specifically for your brands. If you could, if you could share specific insights, uh, you know, on user behavior that you have been seeing in your vertical, I think, yeah, that is something we would uh, love to know. Uh, Bhavna, you wanna wanna go first? Sure. So uh, we have a, quite a few verticals within our business, and I think one of the biggest uh, thing which we've seen, especially in the snacking space, is the whole online snacking. So people, because they're now all home and are doing all the Netflix and chill and the binge watching, are looking for. Uh, snacks and the availability online. So that's gone up pretty high. And uh, then in terms of uh, Saragama, we've seen a lot of uh, increase in the whole music space. So people are listening to a lot of online music and especially as uh, Devesh mentioned about the Jharu Pocha Bhattan. So specific playlists were made for actually easing the jobs for you. So that's on the music space. One business which has we've seen a huge growth in the search volumes and again all of you would identify is the immunity. So for our online uh, Ayurveda business, Dr. Vedras, we've seen a lot of uh, search volume and traction on immunity as well. 
So how to build your immunity, natural ways, Ayurvedic ways. It's like there's zillions of search words which are existing on karhas, formulations and stuff like that. So I guess that's the, those have been the trends during the lockdown. And we see these kind of continuing even post the unlock has happened. Thanks, thanks for sharing, Bhavna. Uh, Amit, uh, do you want to share, uh, you know, in terms of what you, what you have been seeing in your space specifically and for your brand? Sure. So, Rohit, if you see our particular space, basically, which is consumer electronics and consumer durable as a space, we have on an average around 32 verticals that we actually work. Uh, and uh, there are some significant uh, aspects which we actually saw, which was related to the categories and there's some, some significant aspect we saw as an overall brand. If I talk about overall brand, uh, in last three months, if I take the data, every one out of the two consumers really almost 50% of the people really search what is the offering as a brand that you're actually trying to do to fight uh, Corona and what are the any products that you're actually trying to build, which is antivirus or something like that, which is, which has been a huge, huge search across any category to you talk about. Let's say even a very, very non involving category, let's say a wire it's still people are searching that. Do you really have something which can actually protect home uh, from different apps? It has nothing to do with because it doesn't come in contact. Uh, for example, uh, LED bulbs, people are searching that any LED bulb can actually have an impact where you can actually lose uh, uh, the impact of uh, virus to look for. Also, if you see uh, coming to the consumer durable part of the entire uh, story, everybody is actually trying to uh, do two types of searches uh, primarily. One is uh, in the aspect of how to do and how to run and how to do any uh, technical glitches that comes to your product. So for example, water purifier is one category where people really want to start learning and how can you actually change the candle? How can the taste of the water is changed and how you can actually improve on that uh, and that angle. Second thing which is also done is the maximum searches across the consumer durable category which has happened is dishwasher. Across the categories around close to around 95% of the searches that happen gone only on dishwasher. How to use a dishwasher, what are the technical glitches, how to do it on yourself, how you can improve those glitches. Uh, if I actually talk about a more uh, pure data on an average, a consumer durable as a category uh, on a scale of 100, we get around 50, 52 percent searches across the category. Uh, this time, surprisingly, that search percentage has gone to 98 percent. And which is a huge term in terms of the change that we actually see. So these are the bits from my uh, side. Right? Sure. Yeah, I think those are some fantastic uh, insights. Amit. I think dishwasher is something that I've been searching for, uh, for you know, uh, myself lately a lot. So. Yeah, I think I can totally relate to that. Um, uh, passing this question on to Rubina, I think, uh, you know, uh, while, while we kind of, you know, uh, would be great if you could share, you know, insights across different verticals that you kind of, you know, see and you work with. Sure. Uh, so, you know, uh, the common theme that, you know, we are really seeing is that overall consumers still face continued, but less uncertainty, I can say that. And you know, we've seen it um, across our clients and across industries that we work with, that you know, is it safe searches are declining in volume, but increasing in uniqueness. So what I mean to say is that in the beginning of the crisis, you know, everybody had the same focus around safety. So people were asking, is it safe to fly? Is it safe to travel? Is it safe to order food? I think as time has progressed, our worries about safety have become less singular and more personalized. So for instance, today, somebody wants to know, is it safe to go out? While somebody else wants to know, is it safe to swim? Is it safe to play? Is it safe to walk? Is it safe to eat out? Is it safe to drink? Is it safe to, you know, stay, go for a staycation? Is it safe to use this? Is it safe to get this into your home? So, you know, they've really gone uh, um, very uh, personalized, the queries. Um, and having seen the challenges as well as the rewards of a different world, Consumers are making everyday decisions, how they want to live and what is important for them. And they are optimizing their new normal. So that is the common theme uh, that, you know, uh, we're seeing. Apart from it, I'm not going to take time getting into the industry-wise uh, trends that we've seen because we covered it fairly uh, much in detail. The other thing uh, interesting that we are observing is that um, be simply the best in the digital world. You know, because what is happening is that there is abundance of choice which is arising from the internet from a consumer. And consumers at the same point in time in that currently are very mindful of their consumption. They're not spending as they were six months ago, right? So what it really means is that consumers are increasingly looking for the best product that they can get. 
And this is a significant change in the Indian context where, you know, earlier all the searches were, uh, or most of the searches were around cheap. And now they have moved into the area of best. So those are the two broad things that we are noticing apart from, you know, industry-wise trends, which you covered earlier. Thanks, Rubina. Uh, Jai, do you want to share, uh, you know, some of the user insights that you've been seeing specifically, uh, you know, for the BFSI vertical uh, or particularly for your brand as well? Oh, uh, yeah. So, so see, I think we were slightly lucky. See, people were going through health concerns, but I think we also realized that people are going through the concerns of uncertainty and more to do with financial uncertainty. Okay. So, uh, what was happening is we saw bank, obviously bank as a brand keyword did take a dip. But we were still lucky because let's say we had an overall dip around two to four percent as compared to an aggregators or the you know the nbfcs of the world where they took a dip of around 27 to 30 percent that was the kind of uh, you know, and because people want to be more secure in their space and if you also remember pre-covid there was a lot of a uh, lot of news with banking as an industry okay uh, also after the finance minister kind of announced we saw a huge spike in sme loan searches so that was some we kind of really established that we have to really kind of you know uh, get our uh, get a platform straight from SME loans point of view. From call to actions, we saw there were two specific call to actions called instant and apply. Previously, lot of eligibility EMI calculators they were on the on the spot. But now we have realized people are now going for more instant and more, uh, which is kind of uh, end to end straight through process. That is the kind of thing that people are looking for. So, and we have adapted, and not only we, I think everybody in the BFS industry now have adapted to the end-to-end -end straight through process. Okay. Uh, and last but not the least, I think we have seen a very good trend in terms of search from the auto. Because see, we, uh, banking industry is obviously, we are the means to fulfill your dreams. You know, we don't have an end product, right? So what we are seeing is all of a sudden, auto has taken a sharp U-turn and within auto, used cards have taken a sharp U-turn. And that too, government employees and tier one and tier two cities. So very interesting, in, you know, search trends that's coming out. So, and how it's helping us obviously is vernacular targeting the government organizations is really helping us in getting more and more traffic instead of just doing a spread out campaign for auto loans. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Thanks Jai, for sharing. Uh, uh, Devish, you want to share uh, something on what's going on? Uh, what are the user insights and behavior that you're seeing specifically for retail and e-commerce verticals? Yeah. So as you said, right, e-commerce definitely has grown. Um, we, we benefited by that, but there are certain subcategories which have grown way better than the others, right? For example, leisure wear or lounge wear or uh, comfort wear has definitely taken a growth over, let's say, a footwear or a party wear. And that's obvious because people are spending more time at home. Similarly, in the whole consumer durables, electronics category, things which are home oriented, for example, home wear conditioners, televisions, appliances, and smartphones and laptops. So people things people will use at home either for educating themselves, educating their kids or living comfortably. That's the kind of searches internally as well as externally that we are seeing through. Um, right. And users are now actually viewing much more products than they were doing before. So for example, uh, if people were viewing two to three products when they came on the site, now they're doing four to five, which means they're surfing more. Uh, they're exploring the site more. They're exploring products more. They're exploring the categories more. And ultimately, taking their time to decide something, but definitely buying something more than what they were before. Thanks, Devish, for sharing, uh, you know, insights on what is going on in your vertical. Uh, specifically, a question for you, uh, if I were to kind of, you know, talk about uh, digital, digital spend, right? I think on one side, there is social and, and then the other side there is search, right? Uh, what, what, according to you, is the difference between social and search, right? And, and what should brands know, uh, ideally? Sorry. So, uh, so while the bell will go off in like in 15 seconds, but, uh, so social for me is basically a, a behavior of the customer acquiring, right? Um, it's an acquisition by behavior. It's influenced by what this person sees, but search is more intent driven, uh, intent driven in the sense that people will definitely search for appliances before they buy that. So something which comes in the awareness and consideration way before someone makes a transaction overall. Right. Uh, and therefore, search plays a important role for me while we are exploring heavy, intensive categories like air conditioners and, and televisions, which I mentioned. But if it's fashion, if it's loungewear, social plays a much more important role because it's a spur of the moment decision. So for me, category wise, uh, both play a very key role. Yeah, I think um, thanks for sharing that. And I think 
I can I can totally relate to you know how search and social fit in. Uh, and I think while a lot of marketers uh, you know think of search as a performance marketing channel, but I think I personally think that search uh, you know does play a pivotal role not just in driving performance, but I think for driving brand awareness, uh, you know creating influence and and driving consideration as well, right? So my next question for everyone uh, is is you know. What's your take on uh, using search for branding specifically? Because I think there are a lot of users searching for their brand and, and things related directly to your brand. So let's say uh, there might be people who might be searching for soup recipes, right? And and ideally, you know, uh, uh, kind of you know approaching them with a uh, with a soup ad itself, right? Would kind of you know make sense. So any thoughts on that specifically, uh, Bhavna? You want to go first? Sure. So uh, I think search, as much as it is a performance marketer's tool, is also a brand marketer's tool, and uh, there are ways to actually leverage search for brand building and awareness. So it's not only like the bottom of the funnel that you go and pick up and buy something, but it also builds the whole brand imagery as well. And there are few brands who have used it pretty well. So actually, as like taking a bit of a cue from what Devesh was saying, you know, how the intent related searches happen, where it could be specifically buy now or near me or those kind of things to something which could be fairly exploratory. So like, you know, if suppose uh, I'll take an example from my previous uh, company where we were handling the all. So if somebody is looking for soaps, or if somebody is looking for hand cleaning solutions or just cleaning solutions, you had to have a very, very different message versus if they were actually coming to your Dettol soap and wanting to know what Dettol especially has versus if they were doing something which were totally like category cues. So things like disinfectants or uh, how to kill germs or something. So it's very important that brands take a notice of these things and actually leverage their search advertising so that each of the consumer query there is answered to what is best for the brand there. And of course, there are places where people have taken search to another level by completely taking over the competitive keywords and try, you know, especially in the auto industry, we've heard of a lot of examples where people have actually gone ahead and do and done that. So I guess that's the way you can actually use search for building your brands as well. Uh, Rubina, you want to share any thoughts of or, or any specific cases where you know brands have really uh, you know leveraged search for branding uh, you know in a really great way or any any specific insights on how uh, what your thoughts on you know how should ideally brands look out uh, on search for branding? Yeah, um, I think broadly um, it is what you said you know I think we all know that uh, search is a vital channel for driving conversions and we also understand uh, that, uh, you know, uh, search is advertising at the end of it, right? Uh, it's an opportunity for a brand message to impact a target audience and influence the market perception. Um, you know, but the fact of the matter is uh, that, uh, you know, uh, the effectiveness of search advertising doesn't always translate into a prominent place uh, in a brand's media plan. And this really stems from the fact that uh, most brands uh, still look at the last click attribution. And it is because of this, the search for search for branding seems more expensive, right? Um, while other display media, uh, are, you know, are more typical for uh, brand marketers, search advertising presents, a, you know, search advertising also presents another uh, facet to it. Uh, but unlike those channels, um, the way to look at it is, I would say the way to look at it is that search can impact um, brand awareness in moments that matter to consumers, you know, when they are shopping and gathering product information. In other words, brand get a brand can get access to interested um, audiences at the moment the consumers are interested. And savvy marketers have taken advantage uh, of search advertising uh, as a way to showcase their brands prominently and distinctly. distinctly you know, among category interested, um, if I can call undecided consumers, right? And we've got several cases that we've worked with, uh, you know, with uh, uh, in India and globally, uh, Intel being one and L'Oreal another, uh, where uh, they have found that search is a way to drive awareness um, and consideration and not just uh, conversions. Sure, sure. Um, uh... 
uh, Devesh, any any insights specifically on you know uh, where you have uh, you know used search for branding or primarily doing right. as a medium only for performance? Sure. So, uh, so while we talk about search a lot, I think the answer also lies uh, between the mark tech for this, right? Marketing technology for this. Uh, how integrated are you between a brand campaign and a performance campaign? How integrated are you with your campaigns to your search partners? Uh, both of them play a key role, right? Um, just to give a context to it, for example, let's assume, and for us, brand campaigns deliver a lot of visits, uh, a lot of installs because we are heavy app driven, uh, which then integrates with our platform uh, and we are able to pinpoint better who to target for performance and the efficiency therefore increases, right? The feedback is reversed too. Uh, when the performance converts a particular set of customers, the feedback is given back to the brand saying, this is the kind of customers that we need to pitch brand as well for. So while you're making brand campaigns efficient, you're also making performance campaigns efficient. Now, the third thing which I talked about is integration with the partners. Uh, various, both the partners have, have brilliant tools while you can actually search for cohorts of customers that are very related, in fact, in the brand perspective as well, right? Uh, it can give you a set of audiences that you need to target. Uh, so integration, mark tech really plays a new pivotal role for us while we're deciding brand because it's not brand in isolation, but it's how brand will perform to with performance and with partners together. Thanks. Thanks for sharing uh, everyone. Uh, I think uh, that that brings me to my next question. I think, you know, with, with the technological advancements, um, you know, catching up pace, right? Uh, when I say technological advancements, advancements in search, I would actually specifically want to spend some time on talking about voice, uh, use of voice in, in, in search, right? Uh, so any, any specific thoughts, Amit, on that specifically? So, uh, Rohit, uh, if you actually uh, see, uh, apart from voice, voice is definitely has already taken, I think uh, it is not a technology which is coming. Already, if you see on most of the uh, marketplace platforms, you already have voice, which is, is actually been active and that is how actually uh, moving across. And, voice from both the tangents, text to voice and voice to text, both are actually making a huge uh, thing. But also I was just reading one of the case studies, it's an MIT case study. Says I think apart from voice is also visual will actually make a huge difference. So if voice takes 10 seconds, visual takes 13 mil, uh, milli of the seconds to actually get an impact for what we're actually searching for it. So if you see, if I want to divide what exactly technology is trying to build is, uh, one is definitely voice, voice is actually catching up, it is catching up much faster. A uh, second is visual will actually make a huge difference and wearables will be something to really watch out for because wearables like a smartwatch, uh, you have a something smart gadget. If you have a, let's say a caller mic can actually make a huge difference in the way you actually look for the search, uh, your ability to in the entire uh, sphere to look for. Also, I think uh, just to dwell upon your last question and you're talking about, uh, there's a case study of Nike golf, which is, which is a very, very beautiful case study, uh, which was presented in uh, MET in one of the cases which talks about the usage of how search as a brand and search as a performance can actually link for it. Uh, I think that that gets a good uh, impression to marketers to how move in that particular direction. We can actually do a, a connotation effect of both performance as well as uh, how a brand can actually look for that. Uh, Rubina, you want to uh, share your thoughts on specifically what is going on, uh, you know, on the technological advancements they, that are taking place on search. I think you know, with the next 100 million users, right, uh, you know, coming online, probably a lot of them are not comfortable typing when they search, right? So, so what's your take on that? And, and how, how do you think technology can play a really interesting part in kind of, you know, getting those 100 million users online and also kind of, you know, helping them? You know, so I love this topic and I think it's not just getting the next 100 million on, but how search will evolve in the next uh, couple of years. It's almost like, you know, when I was a child and I was watching Star Trek and I thought nothing was possible. I sometimes imagine what search will shape up into. Um, you know, like Amit already said that uh, search is becoming more experience led. You know, earlier when search came in, it was more like a text affair, but today, you know, it has got new forms of media, uh, which you import, which are voice, image, video, and lots of output experiences can be built, which can be 360 degree images, you know, interactive, uh, ideas can be built down, there's AR that can be done. But I think, um, uh, like he also said, that uh, the role of connected devices uh, will play um, a huge, uh, uh, will, you know, will change uh, the search landscape. And it, the role could be quite dramatic, you know, uh, there. So for example, think about it, right? I could say, um, I could, and I, I think search is going to become very conversational and voice-led. That's my view as we go further. So, for instance, I could just say, show me a, you know, a selection of pink dresses I can buy on my TV. 
uh, to my search engine. And the search engine would respond, sending you a selection of pink dresses on your TV. And, you know, I could start choosing in from there. I also think that, you know, currently with the way search engines are transforming and adding layers of contextual understanding and personalization, uh, you know, they will move away from being just search engines to actually personal assistants. And these assistants will be far more action-based. And this is, if you think about it, it's already happening, right? So for instance, today, if I search for a result and say, what is the time, right? And the search engine is already answering that result for me. However, consider a situation where the search engine can solve an even more complex problem. For example, uh, please, you know, I could tell a, a search engine, please order me a brown hair dye to match my usual color, or please order me an Uber or please buy toys for my daughter. And I think with the access to personal data, calendar, address books, and previous shopping habits, um, all these things are going to be possible very soon. I also think search is also going to become preemptive. So think about it that without searching, solutions will start coming up to you. So, and in a way, again, it's already happening, right? We get push notifications, uh, which give you information on your upcoming appointments, travel, etc. cetera. Um, and with, you know, and it's easily possible with the access to calendars and emails. This could be applied to more complex searches also. Like at the example I gave you before, um, you know, perhaps uh, the search engine will tell me that your hair color is starting to fade. Should I order you another permanent dye in the same color that you like? You know, that could also really come along. And if all these potential innovations are, you know, stringed together with the power of AI, I think we'll reach a point where hopefully tomorrow uh, brands will say, uh, you know, the search engine will say, I've written the marketing plan for next year for you and for the product you must launch. And I, re I recommend you bring this to the market and here it is for your sign up, just sign it off. So I think that's really what search is really going to be there. It's going to run our lives. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for sharing, uh, Rubina. I think really great insights. I think, uh, you know, quite uh, with, with kind of, you know, the technological adva advancements happening and, you know, with what we have right now, I think it could be an altogether different world, world that we might step in, right? Um, uh, Jahid, uh, moving, uh, so specifically a question for you in terms of, you know, uh, while we kind of, you know, talked about search and, and the technological advancements that are happening, but I think there is a lot more happening, right, on search specifically, uh, you know, uh, and, and some of those things are customer match, remarketing, right? And I think for, uh, you know, banking as an industry, BFS as, as an industry, I think, uh, you know, uh, finally, you know, uh, being able to drive performance from the users is also critical. So do you want to share any insights on, uh, you know, uh, how, how and, uh, you know, how you have been using search or what's your take on these technological advancements coming in? Sure. So I think, you know, uh, I think we, that, uh, we kind of take pride in uh, some factor is the huge uh, first party base that HDFC Bank has. Okay, uh, being the largest private sector bank in India, uh, we have the highest customer base. And how do we get the maximum out of it? That's always the quest. Okay, and beat any platform. The first question is, can I leverage my first party audience over here? Okay, so that's also, so now we always use custom match. Now how we use it is we have, let's say a lot of pre-approved offers. That's analytically and scientifically done by a machine algorithm, right? We have a pre-approved base, we have a pre-approved offer. So like, let's say, uh, Rohit, for you, there'll be a lifetime free card because I know you are my customer and I can give you this card, which I might not be able to give it to Rubina or maybe for Rubina, I have some separate offer. Okay, now, Rohit, when you come and search for a card on Google, I'll have a separate communication to you vis-a-vis -vis somebody else who is not my customer and searching for the card. Okay, this, this communication differentiation by itself has given me a 25% uplift in my uh, CTRs and obviously CTLs also. Okay, uh, that's something that's significant for us. Uh, the other one that we have seen is uh, how we are using the whole GCLID measurement protocol, which helps us to on the fly optimize my conversion, uh, my entire campaign basis end conversion and gone are the days when people try to do conversion basis leads or basis appointment fixed, right? So it's it's pretty much GCLID based and on the fly, how, how, how we can put measurement protocol on top of my CRM and then get the entire end conversion uh, dynamically optimized. Uh, third thing that, uh, yes, we love to use it as uh, to a relevant to your second question or to the earlier question is how we are using HDFC bank uh, search as a brand. How can we increase brand from search? Now see, 
The personal loans, the credit cards are pretty much old products. They're dogmatic products. People know about them. They know HDFC Bank is some of the best in the industry. That's pretty much set. Okay. Now for new age products, like let's say loan against mutual fund. I'm sure not much of the, not many of the panel members will know that they can get a loan against their mutual funds. Now think of the fact that your mutual funds, you don't even have to exit your mutual fund. They continue to grow. You continue to leverage on the gain that the, the Sensex is going through and yet you get a loan against it. Okay. Now, if I can educate people on these new age products, okay, and when people see, we were doing some research, people have stopped asking their friends and families. People are actually depending themselves by themselves when they do a lot of research on this online. So now when you're looking out for a loan or when you're typing keywords like how to redeem mutual funds, I come, at, come with a word, why don't you see what is loan against a mutual fund before redeeming your mutual fund? And I bring into content page. Then my remarketing starts. And then the other aspect of search, which is called remarketing lists on, on search ads, the, the remarketing list that you create. Okay. So this is how we integrate multiple nuances of search to ensure that we have a brand story laid also, but don't leave anyone till the time we convert him. It might be a longer cycle, but no problem. We are aligned with it for new age products. Sure. Thanks. Thanks Jai, for sharing. I think uh, some really great insights in terms of, you know, how, how, uh, you know, uh, brands and specifically, you know, uh, SDFC has been using uh, the technological advancements in the search market. I think moving on to the next question, um, I think Impact Magazine, right, in its latest edition uh, mentioned that they expect this year's festive season is going to be Q5, right? So it is going to be altogether a new quarter where, you know, uh, I think it is going to be a quarter where all the revival of digital hap spends happen. Yeah. I think, and, and everyone is going to make up for the lost spend that has happened uh, and brands are going to spend a lot more. Right? So uh, specifically, Asking, you know, how do you uh, expect this season to shape up uh, and, and what are you hoping really for, for you know, from your search campaigns uh, this festive season? Um, uh, Bhavna, uh, any, anything you want to share on that? Yeah, I think uh, now that uh, IPL is just upon us and the festive season timed along with it, it is going to be a whole mayhem in the media market if i can call it because there everybody is going on all out on advertising and uh, you know actually trying to get hold of the elusive consumer and of course we are looking at uh, finally the consumer wallets also opening more given that uh, they have been closed for quite a few months right now so there is uh, a revival which is expected and uh, even in terms of uh, how the media properties are being put in right now. So all the all the media properties like a Big Boss or a KBC are all coming back plus the IPL. So it is actually going to see an influx of uh, media money back into the market. At the same time, yes, uh, there is a bit of a caution which is still exists. So it is literally like, you know, whatever you've actually not spent in the earlier couple of quarters, which is coming back in, but I still feel that at an overall level, the spends may not go back to the pre-COVID levels or at an analyzed basis. Sure, sure. Uh, Amit, you want to share uh, thoughts on specifically, uh, you know, things related to festive season that uh, you are expecting from the users out there? See, if you uh, if you bifurcate into two parts, one is the user and one is the brand and the advertiser to look for. Uh, this particular festival is online and a digital festival. And from a consumer standpoint, consumer is really very hesitant to actually go and do a physical purchase outside. And there are most of the companies are innovating in different forms and format to actually try to form uh, how you can actually be and make it a digital, uh, uh, more friendly and more uh, easy for a consumer to actually reach out to it. From an advertiser or a brand perspective, uh, I don't think so. There would be a huge increase in terms of these spends. And specifically, I'm talking about the products uh, to look for. I'm not talking about uh, online gaming or something like that. Because that's, that's a different ball game altogether. And I think we should not swayed away by in terms of putting that somebody's advertising to a big property or a tent pool that can actually be swayed across. Uh, but uh, definitely the amount of increase that will happen on an e-commerce platform, the amount of increase that will happen on most of the social platforms and other particular content creation, specifically if on uh, uh, online as a property definitely will happen. Uh, will it go to what level? I think this is, will be a very, very big prediction and I don't think so any particular marketing or a media pundit can talk about whether it go to the last level. Uh, but the period is, is quite good because if you see from October, November, or Diwali is the mid of November, you also get good amount of sales that you can actually try to drive in November. It will be more uh, in terms of the push that will happen from all the big billion sales and all the other particular sales that will happen from platform. 
that will be a good amount for consumer as well as for an advertiser because that will can we can actually see a resultant effect what is actually trying to be seen in the festival period thanks thanks amit for sharing uh, jai do you want to share uh, any thoughts from uh, from uh, you know the bfsi vertical specifically and and any plans and in terms of how do you expect the season will shape up yeah i can talk about our brand okay uh, so i think we so there are multiple school of thoughts right i think we came from the school of thought that we will not go media dark we changed our pillars of communication during covid from a hardcore action oriented and business from from business oriented we changed ourselves to empathize and uh, convenience safety that's our whole pillar of communication was you saw our ar rahman campaign you saw our, uh, you know uh, we we kind of put laid our grid on the streets for maintaining safe distance so that was the stretch at which we went to okay and now so we somebody did not go media dark okay now ipl is a festival by itself and that stopped up with festivity so now we can imagine the uh, conundrum that will come over there okay so uh, the only thing that i can say is we are working almost like 20 hours a day now to ensure that we leverage it to the fullest what's coming up i think you will see once it comes up but yeah we want to leverage it to the fullest yeah okay yeah i think uh, eagerly waiting for you know what's in stock out there yeah thanks thanks for sharing uh, divesh you want to i think uh, for retail and e-commerce as a vertical right i think uh, i think the festive season is kind of you know uh, a prime time and and how how are you uh, expecting this season to shape up so i think uh, before the festive time uh, for us at least i think amit said it really well before us it's already started picking up right so we've already reached the 3x level of what we were pre covid uh, and obviously we are a growing company so that number uh, will go further up we are expecting a very very big so almost two to three times more than last year than the festive for us right so for us it's definitely a growth momentum the reason i'm saying that is we are on one hand we seeing a consumer demand which means people want to stay home and buy things uh, be it consumer durables be it uh, clothing be it fashion people want to do that at home and second thing is there are brands who've suffered because uh, they've not been able to open stores they've they've suffered in terms of their overall sales so for us it's a dual combination that we will leverage to the fullest um, and as as jai says right we are working 20 hours a day uh it's insane going in and you'll definitely see something from click very very soon um and we we'll not wait for november we're starting october okay yeah uh, great. exactly it's great to hear exciting um uh, rubina you want to talk about um, you know uh, something more specific in terms of you know what what has been the uh, the overall uh, you know vibe across different brands and and uh, specifically you know how are brands planning to kind of you know use search this festive season Yeah, so I think uh, festive season is always the time for heightened uh, shopping intent, right? Um, and this year, I think that's going to be still a case where people will avoid going out and buy and prefer to buy online over stores. And that's uh, exactly what the relation I made earlier said. So uh, brands are gearing up for that. Uh, typically, we are seeing, um, you know, we see beauty and apparel start peaking one month prior, and search is going up one month prior, and. So, you know more like smartphones or televisions home improvement start about 15 to 20 days prior to the festivities i think from a trending topics point of view it will be interesting there's going to be a lot of uh, food recipes so i'm going back to my uh, cooking piece uh, festive fashion of course a lot of devotional and folk music i think will also pick up and the other interesting thing is that like if uh, those of you in bombay knew that uh, during ganpati the pandals were uh, available uh, you know open for people to uh, for devotees to visit so there were a lot of online uh, videos uh, which were available and which saw people were searching for them and viewing them quite a bit i think similarly for the shara uh, or even um, for navratri uh, that could be the trend we could see getting into the festive season so uh, yeah i think uh, this is going to be uh, you know probably the festive season the new normal and i think uh, you know we'll soon know how this kind of you know shapes up uh, so i think that brings me almost to the end almost to the end of this panel discussion but i think before we end up this discussion we will have kind of a quick round of rapid fire and i have like a couple of questions for uh, you know all of you um, uh, if you could kind of you know try to describe uh, or answer that in one word or one sentence then i think uh, that would be great so i think if i were to ask you uh, what's the one thing that you would want to change when it comes to search advertising what would that be rubina for me I, i i get drowned trying to look at stuff when i'm searching so i i wish search was more personalized so i'd spend less time in getting what i wanted to 
Jai. Image extensions, please bring them back. Okay. Divish. Uh, more mark tech man. Uh, the better it, the efficiency, the better it's for me. Okay. Amit. Uh, remove ad hocism. Ad hocism. Okay. <laughs> That's 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 something uh, very insightful, Bhavna. So, as speak from from a marketer perspective, I think the virality which is there on social media doesn't exist on search. So, if there was some way we could actually leverage it and make it more social. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think that that will kind of you know look as a mix of search and social. I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Coming to my next question, uh, if I were to ask, what would be your ultimate measure of ROAS, right? Which is return on ad spend. What would that be, uh, Bhavna? You wanna go first? I think the ultimate ROAS for everybody is sales, sales, sales. जब तक गंदा नहीं बढ़ता तब तक कुछ नहीं होता है. So you can keep on attributing and doing all those measures, but eventually, what uh, is exactly discussed in the boardroom is the final sales. So for us, any which is whatever you do, everything is intermediary. It's just sales at the end of it. Sure, uh, Amit, you wanna go next? I think uh, the overall ROAS should not be measured only on a search campaign or on a search as a piece per se. It has to be measured on a brand. And uh, what is the overall measure on a brand that can actually see an impact? I think that should be a long-term vision, not a very small or a uh, very uh, short-sighted vision to look for. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, attribution does play a really important part because the users might be kind of searching on uh, you know a search platforms, but kind of you know eventually maybe. It, it is. It, it's a, it is, and it is a journey. It is not only one particular sporadic campaign, and then you think that you have done something first. That is how it is. Yeah, yeah. Devesh, you want to go next? Sure. Uh, for me, so for us, we basically have two north star metrics while we uh, while we confirm brand and performance. It's CAC, which is customer acquisition cost, and cost per order. Two metrics, overall campaigns, including brand performance. That's the north star metric for us. Sure, uh, Gahit. Uh, any thoughts on 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 you know uh, what's the true measure of ROAS for you? Yeah. So if I am if we are talking about increasing brand, it's about cost. It's the amount of time spent, or rather cost per session, and cost of amount of time spent that the guy is engaging on my you know content led stories. Uh, second is do we predominantly measure Cost of end disbursal. If I'm talking about end product, but as Divesh was rightly highlighting, we are trying to build up that market, which will help us to get the lifetime value of the acquired customer from search. Sure, sure. Yeah. Rubina, uh, your final thoughts on on you know how do kind of you know uh, different categories and and kind of brands you know uh, look for ultimate measure of ROAS. Uh, you know, from an industry perspective, and what do you think personally? Uh, you know, ideally would be a good way to measure ROAS. So we are trying to move. the clients that we work uh, with away from uh, you know traditional metrics like roas and cost of sale and actually move them to more business intelligent uh, metrics to what you know to uh, just elaborate on what bahna was trying to indicate so we are working with them on their uh, you know business metrics for instance prioritizing for net margins or uh, selling high stock inventory for them or optimizing for new conversions or increasing brand awareness so we are actually working on business intelligent metrics for them rather than just uh, cost of sale or uh, roas to be honest sure sure i think uh, i think uh, those are some really great insights i think we have got to learn like a lot more uh, good trends and insights uh, you know on search advertising market and and you know how our brands leveraging search for their customers so i think that uh, with that i would kind of like to end this panel discussion i would like to thank you all for you know taking time for this really insightful session Uh, we would like to now open up uh, you know uh, the panel for any questions from the audience so i think there are quite a few questions that i can see in on the chat window itself um uh i think the question is ravi uh, from the nielsen marketing effectiveness team uh, the question is for those who manage the digital ad marketing portfolio how are you measuring efficiency for your search marketing what kind of tools and processes you use to know the impact of search on other channels and vice versa uh jai do you want to take that question uh yeah i'm actually also going through the question um so i'll tell you we uh, so there are two three ways of measuring the end impact that you're getting from search okay while we believe that so there are so we identify what are the kind of keywords that we are targeting for right if it is high intent keywords which is be meant uh, which is a uh, hardcore meant for performance we completely measure it for cost for end acquisition however if it is meant for mid funnel and top of the funnel campaigns 
we do the entire assisted funnel journey by adobe analytics or google analytics we have adobe analytics now okay so that is where we understand the entire assisted funnel how so the entire journey and which i think amit was also talking about uh, it will be a combination it's a journey right like in many products we are auto loan step in after the 45th day okay you first think of buying a car and then you start thinking of uh, buying a or to take a car loan to buy the car okay so that's how we measure the entire circle of the journey and the, uh, we kind of the assisted funnel helps us to understand the impact of search sure uh, i think we have uh, a question can we like, get a recording of this yes you can uh, need to know the specific change in brand strategy taken by any panelist uh, which which is kind of leveraging the opportunity during uh, during the pandemic i'll kind of you know open it up for everyone Uh, any any specific brand strategy that that you know you guys have uh, taken as an opportunity during the pandemic i can take that roit if you uh, with your permission so uh, what we did is as and search definitely played a major role in terms of changing that particular forming that strategies because uh, if you see most of the consumer businesses are basically a traditional uh, businesses which are dealer and distributor led businesses and when the market is not opening people are not visiting shops people are not visiting mfrs which is large format retail as well as lfrs which is Uh, or mfrs and multi brand outlets which are not present how would a consumer will actually be ready to go and buy how would a particular dealer will actually try to get this particular uh, any particular product that you need to look for so what we did is we we derive a new concept which is called o2o which is online to offline where we actually ask people to come to our shop.havels.com where we can actually select any product that they want to buy and within the buy the first thing that we need to do is to go and put the zip code and the pin code that they are looking the product for you will have three options to look for and the three options are from three dealers or the retailers which are present in those particular area and then you can select which of them you want to go for it and your order would be fulfilled uh, in that and this is completely because when we saw that there is no particular lead that has been generated and there is no particular actually uh, cost that has been uh, trying to look for this is a very effective model that we thought and is going very successfully because most of the people are preferred uh, to get things at their place and we are trying to deliver from their particular nearby stores to deliver in their area sure. thanks thanks amit for sharing uh, i think we have an interesting question here uh, any recommendations for small businesses who are trying to promote their e-commerce website over marketplaces like amazon flipkart etc and i think as small businesses how do you compete with these marketplaces in popular fmcg categories using search uh, rubina bhavna you want to you want to take this one yeah sure so i think not just small businesses even large businesses large d2d c businesses are right now struggling with that on how to kind of uh, what should be their strategy on their brand.com right because there are marketplaces on one end and uh, then there are their brand.coms at the other end um there is no straight answer i like the uh, you know uh, it depends on um, what your business strategy is and i'm going to just take a use case of uh, or an example of nike and the way they do it is that uh, while they're there on marketplaces but uh, you know all their premium products and launches etc uh, they keep it only on their brand.com so that ensures that you know there is also a, a you know significant pull for their brand.com and uh, there's also uh, for price sensitive customers you know there is also uh, the marketplaces that where they go to so it really depends on how you want to win in it but uh, um, you got to think through um you know your business problem and how you want to approach it and then digital strategies can be devised around it yeah uh, and just to add to what rubina said i think uh, for small business it's very important to be actually make sure that the spillover is the least even in terms of geos or demo or whatever they are targeting and in terms of trying to actually figure out what their usp is so there are enough and more brands which have been built on the b2c platform in the recent past and uh, all of them though they do have presence on the online marketplaces they have been able to do a lot of work d2c as well because i think you get the power of data and insights once you have your own d2c platform which you never get from the marketplace and that's what you need to leverage to actually tailor make your uh, communication to the exact audience who you're trying to actually you know target so could be a let's say even a soap or a shampoo or whatever you're looking for actually target it very well because whatever insights you get from your own platforms you never get it from the marketplaces sure i think uh, an extension to that that question is uh, this is for a company which sells spices uh, and and uh, the question here is uh, the cost of each pack is almost less than 30 rupees or so right 
and i think people are trying new products and and you know ordering new products for taste so will it fall under spur or intent and how do we uh, you know come to that answer or derive that answer anyone uh, so i think uh, this is more with respect to uh, should it be intent based or or should would it be like an impulse buy or something and how do we kind of you know arrive at that answer this so i'll take a crack at it right uh, so we run multiple products which are let's say less than 100 less than 200 sometimes right for those for us are something which a person doesn't think too much before buying um and anything which is priced less than 500 300 is generally a spur decision even if it means spices if you are running a big brand company who has a uh, thousands of skews of such items then you need to create a brand of your own obviously there are multiple brands that we know of we can talk of uh that's an example when you're doing brand strategy but if you're an isolated player who's launching 30 40 skews it's more of a swerve of a moment uh, to see or witness something very really, really different so there is specifically uh, there is another question for you uh, in terms of what are your views on offline retail post covid and and do you see a lot of searches coming in from tier 2 tier 3 cities as well and and then how how do those searches look different from those coming in from urban cities sure so uh, i'll answer the offline store part so actually we're working with a lot of brands uh, there is a concept called as omni channel which means we've now started delivering from stores um, so we used to do that from the last two and a half years but that's just caught momentum more so i think while we slowly come out of covid the stores will start having multiple meanings it can be people to come browse it can be fulfillment centers uh, i don't have a correct answer but that's the direction that we're going in but that's for sure that we'll see a new avatar of offline stores coming really really soon um on the second part are we seeing a lot of searches from tier 2 tier 3 the answer is yes uh, we are but the best part is we target the similar set of audience both in tier 1 and tier 2 3 cities which means upper middle class um, and slightly higher because we only keep brand products um and therefore for us the search is remain constant it's just the expansion of the domain and as i said we are being opportunistic to reach out to more people but i think the trend of searches for us is the same across all of them sure sure uh, i think there are a couple more questions i'm not sure if everyone uh, is fine extending for another couple of minutes or or kind of you know should uh, be taken later rohit i'll have to drop off i have to go and search for some more things <laughs> Okay sure I think uh, it was great to have everyone uh, you know on the panel thank you again for joining uh, it was a really insightful session and I think I'm sure uh, you know the attendees and the audiences uh, have have gotten some really good insights about you know uh, search advertising and and what to do for them thank you so much rohit i think you have really organized quite well thank you so much for having us thank you so much take care bye thank you for having us rohit thank you thank you everyone thank you guys thank you rohit thank you bye bye thank you everyone bye bye